Uh, Dave Boyer, Washington Times, please. Dave. Thank you. Come on, Dave. Gotta Thank get you, going, Mr. Dave, President. Dave. Apologies. That's all right, Dave. Mr. President, uh, this morning on Twitter, you were referring to the testimony of James Comey vindicating you. But I wondered if you could tell us in person, sir, why you feel that his testimony vindicated you when it's really boils down to his word against your word. And if you could also tell us, sir, are, do tapes exist of your conversations yeah. with him? Well, I'll tell you about that maybe sometime in the very near future. But uh, in the meantime, no collusion, no obstruction. He's a leaker. Uh, but we want to get back to running our great country jobs trade deficits we want them to disappear fast north korea big problem middle east a big problem so that's what i am focused on that's what i have been focused on but yesterday uh, showed no collusion no obstruction uh we are uh doing really well that was an excuse by the democrats who lost an election that some people think they shouldn't have lost because it's almost impossible for the Democrats to lose the Electoral College, as you know. You have to run up the whole East Coast and you have to win everything as a Republican, and that's just what we did. So it was a, uh, just an excuse, but we were very, very uh, happy. And frankly, uh, James Comey confirmed a lot of what I said, and some of the things that he said just weren't true. Thank you very much. Do you have a question? Thank you. And Mr. President, if you could tell us, uh, a couple weeks ago, President Trump was in Brussels at the NATO meeting, and not only was he encouraging NATO members to pay up the 2% required of GDP for national defense, but he also was saying that uh, countries, even including yours, who had not paid 2% in the past uh, should make up for that, that difference. Uh, do you think that's fair? I was in Brussels and I met President Trump and I listened to his speech and I liked it. Because you see, NATO is based on values, but it is ultimately a military alliance. And you know, military spendings are complicated and you need a lot of money because NATO is the strongest alliance the earth ever saw and we want to keep it that way so we have to spend money for defense purposes and spending money means if you're in alliance everybody has to spend money this is called burden sharing and i fully agree mr president to that uh, so of course some people liked this better and some didn't like it so much, but it's a simple fact that we have to do this, not as a purpose in itself. We have to do this to stay strong, to be strong, and to defend our nations. 100% correct. And you know, one of the things I was referring to during that speech was the fact that yes, they haven't paid what they should be paying now, but for many years, they haven't been paying. So I said, do we ever go back and say, how about paying the money from many, many years past? Now, I know no president has ever asked that question, but I do. Uh, we're going to make NATO very strong. You need the money to make it strong. You can't just uh, do what we've been doing in the past. So I did say, yes, you haven't paid this year. But what about the past years, the many past years where you haven't paid? Perhaps you should pay some or all of that money back. Uh, you have a question? Thank you. Uh, I have a question for President Trump. Um, on the matter of security, sir, you 
Many of the countries on the eastern flank of NATO, including Romania, see Russia as a threat to the security and the peace in the region. Do you share this vision and uh, do you think that the uh, uh, United States should act under Article 5 if any of this country will be under military aggression? Thank you very much. Well, I'm committing the United States and have committed, but I'm committing the United States to Article 5. And certainly we are there to protect. And that's one of the reasons that I want people to make sure we have a very, very strong force by paying the kind of money necessary to have that force. But yes, absolutely, I'd be committed to Article 5. Thank you. Mr. President, were there any discussion about the visa waiver program for Romania? Is there a time frame for including our country in this program? Thank you. We didn't yes. discuss it. We didn't discuss it, but there would be certainly, it would be something we will discuss, Mr. President. I, I mentioned this issue and uh, I uh, also mentioned it uh, during other meetings uh, I had because this is important for us, it's important for Romanians who want to come to the United States. And you see, more and more people come, President Trump, from Romania to the United States. Some come as tourists, some come for business, and those who come for business should be encouraged. So the matter of visa waiver would be probably uh, important to discuss and we all hope that uh, we will advance on this. Good. Um, well, I look at those hands up there, President. Do you have this in Romania too? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got the microphone. Oh, boy. If you allow me, if Mr. I could Pre only, If I could only sell that, if I could only sell it. Who would like to ask? Should I take one of the killer networks that treat me so badly as fake news? Should I do that? Huh? Go ahead, John. Be fair, John. Oh, absolutely. Remember how um, nice you used to be before I ran? Um, Such a nice man. Always fair. Uh, Mr. President, um, I want to get back to James Comey's testimony. You suggested he didn't tell the truth in everything he said. Uh, he did say under oath that you told him to let the Flynn, uh, you, you said you hoped the Flynn investigation you could let. He could I didn't let say that. So he lied about that. Well, I didn't say that. I mean, I will tell you, I didn't say that. And, and did he ask you to pledge his And there'd loyalty? be nothing wrong if I did say it, according to everybody that I've read today. But I did not say that. And, and did he ask for a pledge of loyalty from you? That's another thing he said. No, he did not. So he said those things under oath. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of those events? One hundred percent. I didn't say under oath. I hardly know the man. I'm not going to say I want you to pledge allegiance. Who would do that? Who would ask a man to pledge allegiance under oath? I mean, think of it. I hardly know the man. It doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say that, and I didn't say the other. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would, would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you, Jim. And you seem to be hinting that there are recordings of those conversations. I'm not hinting anything. I'll tell you about it over a very short period of time. When is that? Okay. Okay. Do you have a question here? When, when, when will you tell us about the recording? Over a fairly short period of time. Are there tapes, sir? Oh, you're going to be very disappointed when you hear the answer. Don't worry. John, do you have a question for the president? Yes. Thank you. And uh, President Johannes, uh, you are no stranger to Russian aggression. Vladimir Putin recently uh, suggested that Romania could be in Russia's crosshairs. Are you... How concerned should the world be about Russian aggression in your region? And how concerned should we be here in the United States about what Russia tried to do in our election, sir? Everybody's concerned. But you see, being concerned should lead you to being prepared. So in, in my opinion, we, we have to be very clear very simple and very straightforward if we talk about Russia and with Russia. In my opinion, we need dialogue. But on the other hand, we need what we all together decided in NATO, a strong deterrence. 
So this combination, strong deterrence and dialogue, should lead towards a solution which is feasible for every part. Domnul Pantazi. Hello, Mr. President Trump. You mentioned uh, uh, you mentioned earlier the anti-corruption fight in Romania. Uh, it is a, a matter of high importance in in our country. Uh, but we see now that the anti-corruption anti fight and uh, the efforts to consolidate the rule of law are sometimes undermined by some politicians. Part of what we can call the Bucharest swamp. Is your administration going to support the anti-corruption fight in Romania, and how can you do it? Thank you. Well, we support very strongly Romania, and therefore, obviously, we do support that fight on anti-corruption. We will always support that, and we support your president. We think he's done an outstanding job, very popular, uh, very solid, working very hard. We know everything that's going on. And uh, yeah, he, and he's going to win that fight. He's going to win that battle, but he has our support. Thank you so much. Do you see the corruption in Romania as a problem for the U.S.-Romania partnership and for the American investor as a threat because we still have corruption in Romania despite this anti-corruption fight? Well, you do, but I can tell you that there are many American investors right now going to Romania and investing. In fact, I was given a charge just before our meeting, and uh, we have people going over to Romania and investing, and they weren't doing that a number of years ago. So that shows very, very big progress, and there really are a lot of congratulations in store. But a lot of people are investing from our country to yours, and people love from Romania the United States, and they come here a lot, and we're very proud of them. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. This was absolutely excellent. Thank you. Delegation? Delegation, right to say? Can you have a minute? Or I can ride with you.